Hi, my name is Vladimir and in this video I will solve a Kubernetes challenge that I had a couple of years ago during one of my job interviews. You can use this material to test your Kubernetes knowledge or to prepare to the upcoming Kubernetes interview. First, let's go through the task. We will download a simple Python-based web server, dockerize it and run it locally. After that, we will run it as a deployment on a Kubernetes cluster and expose it to the outside world. Then we'll modify the source code so the application waits 30 seconds before starting and add a Kubernetes health check so that no traffic goes to the application until it is ready. And finally, we'll create a config map and configure the application to use the content from this config map as a web server message. You can pause the video now and attempt to solve the challenge yourself if you'd like. Otherwise, follow me along. Let's download the source code and go through it. It's a Python script that creates an instance of, of a simple server class. On each GET request, it gives a text-based response. This essentially means that every time we open the web browser, this Kubernetes interview challenge phrase will be displayed. The web server process will listen to connections from all external addresses on port 8080. Before we attempt to dockerize it, we will run it locally and see what will happen. Once we launch the application, let's open the web browser and go to localhost on port 8080. What we should see is our web server message. Kubernetes interview challenge. Also, in the terminal, we can notice a container log that indicates successful responses to our browser requests. When we stop the container and refresh the browser tab, no page is displayed anymore. Let's move forward and dockerize the application. We will switch to the code editor and create a docker file. The docker file that we'll need is very simple. It only contains three lines. First, we'll specify the base image using the from directive. After that, we will copy the source code into the container using the copy directive. And finally, we will use CMD to launch the application as soon as the container starts. Let's build our Docker image. We will use the docker build command for that. Dot means built in the current directory. The minus T flag is used to provide the name of the image. After the semicolon, we will provide an image version, which will be 0.0.1. Once the image is built successfully, it's time to run it. We will use the docker run command for that. The minus T option means we will attach to the container's terminal so we can obtain logs if needed. The minus D option means the container will run as a daemon or in other words, in the background. And minus P will enable port forwarding so we can still open the web application that is running inside the container using our local web browser. Let's make sure the container is started and check its logs. After this is done, we will get back to the web browser and refresh the web page. The result is identical. However, the web page is served using the container. We can also use the command called curl to repeat the same task but without a browser, directly from a terminal. Let's do this as well. As you can see, we are getting the same response. Once the container is validated locally, we can kill it and move to the next step, which is deploying to a Kubernetes cluster. But before we go ahead, we will need a cluster itself. I will use the Amazon EKS cluster deployed using a Terraform module using this tutorial from HashiCorp Learn. The link for the tutorial will be in the video description. We just need to clone the repository and run Terraform apply. I strongly believe that that's the easiest option to deploy an EKS cluster. If you're aware of some other options that seem easier for you, let me know in the comments. Creating an EKS cluster is not a quick task. It will take around 15 minutes to deploy everything. I will fast forward and get back once the cluster is ready. Once the cluster is created, let's connect to it. We'll generate a kubeconfig using AWS EKS update kubeconfig command. Let's check that all nodes are ready and we can move forward. Before we deploy the actual container to Kubernetes, let's create a deployment that's running Nginx container as a mock. And also, we will expose it using the cluster IP service. To test the web server, we will run one more container that will use curl to connect to the exposed service. What we received is a standard HTML response, which is returned by Nginx. Now, let's write both the deployment and the service into the file. In this file, in the deployment spec, we will delete all the unneeded fields, such as significant part of metadata and the entire status field. And also repeat the same for the service. Now, let's make sure our YAML file is right by deleting and recreating our deployment from it. And also test it one more time using our curl container. 
Now it's time to replace Nginx mock with our actual application. To do that, we will need to store a container somewhere. For this purpose, we will create a public repository in Amazon Elastic Container Registry. A very neat thing about ECR is that it gives you hints about which commands you need to run every time you create a repository. To upload an image, we will first complete Docker authentication using the command provided by Amazon. Then we will add a proper tag and use the docker push command to upload it. Pushing an image to ECR might take significant time. So I'll fast forward again and get back once the image is uploaded. After the image is uploaded, we can use it in our deployment instead of Nginx. Let's apply our deployment and test using Coral. As you can see, we have an error. The reason for this error is that Nginx is serving on port 80, while our application is using port 8080. We will need to adjust our server definition and reapply. Let's test one more time, and now it is working as expected and the proper web page is served. The next step in this challenge is to modify the application code so it waits 30 seconds before starting. To do this, we will use a standard Python function called sleep. Right at the beginning of the main function, we will need to type sleep and the number of seconds to wait inside round brackets. Let's build the image once again. The syntax of this command is identical, except for one thing. We will use a different tag, 0.0.2. And obviously, we will also take the image and push it to ECR. This time, the Docker push was completed much faster. That's because our layered approach that is used by Docker. When we already have an image in the registry, only changes are uploaded, while parts that have not been changed are reused. Let's change the image version in our deployment manifest and reapply. This time we'll need to wait 30 seconds to allow the application to start, and only after that we can test the web page. The next step in this task is to add a liveness probe. We will use the HTTP GET liveness probe on port 8080. Then, let's apply the changes and observe what will happen with our deployment. Here you can see that new pod that contains Linus Probe was added and the previous pod is being terminated. Everything seems fine, however now we can see that pod restart started to happen. And after the fifth restart, the pod changed its status to crash load back off. The behavior is expected. The Linus Probe tests the container and restarts it before the application finished its 30 second pause. This happens again and again in the infinite loop. That's why the pod status is called crash loop back off. To fix the issue and allow Linus probe to work properly, we'll need to add a delay to the Linus probe as well. So it will only start doing the health check when the application is ready. This is done using the initial delay seconds property. Let's have it one second bigger than the application wait time. Let's apply the change and make sure the pod is not restarting anymore. Then we can also test our web page again. As the last task in this challenge, we will create a config map and use it in our deployment. There is a hack that allows us to generate YAML file for any Kubernetes object using kubectl. We just need to add the dry run flag and redirect output to YAML. After that, we will copy the output and add it to our deployment manifest. And of course, we will add some actual data inside the config map. Our final goal is to display the message using our Python server. Kubernetes allows passing contents of secrets and config maps into pods using environment variables. Let's use this option to achieve the goal. In the value from section, we'll provide the name of the config map, that's Python server, and the name of the key within the config map, that's message. And also, we'll need to modify the source code so it imports the environment variable and display its contents as a web server message. We will use the standard function called getENV so that before sending the response, it will read the environment variable and write to the response section. 
Let's rebuild our container image again, tag it and push it. This time its version is 0 0.0.3. Also, after we push, don't forget to change the version of the image in our deployment manifest. After we applied the changes, let's test one more time using curl. And now we can see the message from our config map. The task is completed. Congratulations. So this is it. I hope this challenge was useful for you. If you enjoyed the video, please support the effort by liking and subscribing.